You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, I will guide you through the steps required to get your remote demo equipment and software set up. I'll also briefly walk through the layout of Movacon so you can take some time to become familiar with it. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I am assuming you have already completed the previous videos in this series. To follow along, you'll need access to the remote demo system, and be sure you're connected to a station that has a smart panel HMI and the MP3300 IEC demo. Okay, let's confirm the functionality of all of the software that we will use. And first is the Yaskawa Remote I.O. Basically, just be sure that you have control power connected and we're not gonna use anything else. So that's here at the bottom. If you have XYZ control power disconnected, just be sure it's on. And after that, you can just close this remote IO. We will not really be using it for anything else. Now we had you already test communications to the IEC controller with the web UI, but now we're gonna need you to log in and send what's called the project archive and reboot the system. So let me show you how to do that. Just go up here to user and log in. The username is capital A admin and the password is all caps here MP3300. And you might click remember me just to make that easier next time. Let's do sign in. Now you have more menu items up here and the one that you want is under setup and it's called archive. And you want to send an archive that came with the class materials download here for this class. So we'll do send to controller, add archive, and then please navigate to the directory where you downloaded the materials and files, and you want the file called archive, smart panel basic, and open. Then you send it, hit, click send, and finally install. This takes a few seconds. And when it's complete here, you see the archive is listed, and you'll see the appropriate files down below. And now we reboot so that this archive runs. Go to reboot. Okay. That takes maybe 30 seconds. And you will reconnect like this when the reboot is complete. You can always keep an eye on it also through the camera if you want to see what's going on with the controller. Okay, one more step here is now that we've got the right configuration, we want to send default parameter set down to each of the axes. You just go to setup, drive parameters, and then here on the left side, factory default, write all default PNs, and confirm with write. That just takes a few seconds, and it will have this green text verified. And one more reboot, we will be ready with the controller. Now you may see under the operations menu that the PLC is stopped. And if that's the case, just go to start, and you'll want to select cold and then start. Also, you may see some alarms and that's okay for now. We will take care of those when we program the HMI. Next up is VNC viewer, which you should have already downloaded and installed. And here's what it looks like the first time. You need to enter the IP address of the HMI to connect to. And as you'll see here, my smart panel address is 192.168.15.198. So just type that in there and hit enter. And now the key piece of information here is the password, which is VIPATP. I'll show you that here with the eyeball. And you might want to just check remember password. You click OK. And a VNC viewer remembers that connection for last time. And you'll see then the HMI. And the screen may look different than this. It really just depends on the previous state of the HMI. But you can always compare this to what you see on the camera. Um, you may be able to see the HMI on the camera depending on what demo you are connected to. And in this case, I do have it on the camera. And you might be able to see as I'm moving my cursor around, that's also reflected on the camera with a short time delay. At this time, you just want to be sure that you can get the VNC viewer connected. Uh, later on, I'll be going over what to do within the HMI and how to set it up. 
Now you will need MotionWorks IEC for this training, even though we do not use it that much. You will need it briefly from time to time, especially here toward the beginning. So this is just a good time to launch the software and be sure you don't have a trial version expired or anything like that. I will be using version 3.7.1, the current release at this time. And if there's any project open, you can just go ahead and close the project with the file menu. And that's all for MotionWorks IEC 3 right now. Of course, Movicon is the focus of this training. So why don't we take a little time here to look at that software. In Windows, it's called HMI Editor. And when you open it, it may show a previous project. Again, I'd recommend that you close uh, with the file menu until you have no projects at which point it will look something like this. For this overview, let's just start with a new project. This is not the normal way that we would start a new project, but just go to File, New, and scroll down here to Empty Project, and click Open, and I'll just call it Overview. We're not going to use this project after this video. And just click Finish here. And the first thing I'd like you to do here with me is go to the Screens, area under the Project Explorer, and right-click Add a New Screen. Screen 1 is a file name for that. Now you see this view looks different. We can return to the Project Explorer here by hovering over Project Explorer on the left, and then use the Auto Hide pin icon to keep that permanent there on the left. You can do the same thing here with the Toolbox and Properties. I'll pin the Toolbox and in fact, you can undock it and move it wherever you want. And this toolbox is where you can find things like basic shapes and basic controls. For example, a, a basic push button. I'm just uh, dragging and dropping them on here. Emergency buttons, lights, LEDs, all that kind of thing here is found in the toolbox. And later in the training, we'll use these little by little. But you can go through here and just look at what's available for the different types of buttons. And uh, in fact, uh, you can drag and drop them in like I'm doing, or you can highlight it, just select it, and then with the cursor, draw the shape or the size of the button that you want. There's switches, selectors, or for three states and two states. You got sliders, it's trend and data analysis. You've got objects. The objects that we'll use a lot here are the edit box display, we will use an alarm window, a, a tab group, and I've used a group box before. And you see clocks. So all of these types of objects are available. And just go ahead and play around with them a little bit if you want to. Now we need to make the properties appear also. So I need to change this width here between the toolbox and the properties. And see whatever you click on, that changes the properties, but that properties window will disappear unless you pin that also. So now I have both the toolbox and the properties pinned. And you see the properties updates depending on what you click on. You can take one of these windows and drag it to dock it at a certain location. For example, I usually like the toolbox over there in the far right and the properties toward the middle. Of course, that's all preferences and you're free to lay it out however you want to. Once you have the Properties window up, you'll notice that there are two tabs for it. One is Properties, and the other one says Symbol Libraries. These work a little bit different than the other items in the toolbox. And Symbol Libraries is a collection of both what you might call a clip art and objects with actual function. So as you look through these here, you can see there are just a lot of different um, pictures that you can use. Also, you can browse at the bottom by category. And there's, of course, way too many to go through all these here. But just like the toolbox, you take these and drag and drop them in. Then once selected on them, they have the property. Now, some of them are animated and actually have the possibility to change the way they look. For example, if you go all the way to the beginning here, access animated, and I take this lift gate, and drop it in there, you notice that it's asking me here for a 
a variable. And once we had a project with variables, you can assign a variable to some of these. And, and then that would change the way that it looks. So go ahead and look through some of these symbols and see what's interesting to you and get used to just what you can do to move them around and size them. And that will be about all we do here with this project. It's just a little playground for you to get comfortable with the software, a little bit familiar without worrying about messing anything up. Now, finally, there's a setting that you might find useful. It's under Tools, Customize Options. Let me explain that a little bit. So when you click on a menu and you see this down arrow icon, you need to understand that there is more to that menu than you're seeing right now. Well, you can get rid of that under Tools, Customize, Options, and that feature is called Menus Show Recently Used Commands First. You might like to deselect that and close so that no matter what, every time you look at the menu, it shows all of the items and does not hide anything. And with this, we will conclude the setup and move a overview. You can go ahead and close this project. You can save and if you want to, we will not be coming back to this. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com slash HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movacon HMI editor.